from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. You are part of the Power Nation, and I'm so delighted that you're here because here we help you improve your attitude, your health, your relationships, your finances, and your career. This is episode number 28 of Boaz Power TV, and I call this one The Bridge in La Jolla. If you've ever been to San Diego, and if you haven't, you should go. They don't pay me to tell you this, but I lived there for many years, and it's absolutely a gorgeous place. One of the reasons I liked it, I suppose, is the climate and the terrain very much like that of where I grew up, where I was born in Israel. I used to live around the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and there in Israel they have palm trees, eucalyptus trees, just like they do in San Diego. So if you ever visit San Diego, you should go out to La Jolla, the beautiful area on the beach. Oh, it's just a lovely, lovely area. And just on the north edge of La Jolla, there's the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, and just up the road from Scripps is a very unique bridge in La Jolla. Now, this bridge is like a series of triangles. It's across a little road, and the whole walkway, it's a walking bridge. You just walk across from one side to the other. It's suspended from one post on one side, and there are strands of steel coming out from that one post, and they go across and hold the entire walking bridge up. And I thought about the correlation of a bridge to our relationship with other people. That in order to create harmony, in order to great, create great relationships, and isn't that the foundation of all of our future happiness? What's the number one greatest relationship you should create with yourself? Number two, with a spouse or significant other, children, friends, relatives, co-workers, clients. It's all about great relationships where we bridge the gap from not knowing someone to knowing them well. So my mother was amazing at creating bridges with people, at creating great relationships. When we came to America, my parents had no money and spoke not a word of English, and in a few years they had both. My mother was very successful in a business she started, and I believe it was because she was genuinely interested in other people. That's the beginning point of creating great relationships, is to be genuinely interested in other people. She said, everybody's got a story. She was fascinated in your story. She said, I can learn from everybody. So she was genuinely interested, but she also had a process that helped her build amazing bridges with people. And it has been the foundation of why I am very successful as a speaker. She asked everybody the same five questions. These are questions that people love answering. Now keep in mind, everybody's favorite topic is them. You say, wait a minute, Boaz, how do you know that, that everybody's favorite topic is them? Well, look at a high school graduation picture of your class. Who do you look for first? You. There I am. Wasn't I handsome? So mother's opening question came right after an opening phrase, which was, I'm just curious, which is much nicer than saying, tell me your social security number and how much money do you make? So mother would say, I'm just curious. So she had this hand gesture, which was so relaxed. It made you feel very comfortable. So after the, I'm just curious, she would say, where are you from originally? Notice the tone, easy going. Not, where were you born? Too sharp. Where are you from originally is what friends would say. So after the opening, I'm just curious, she would ask, where are you from originally? Mother's number two question depended on the answer to number one. If your answer was right here, wherever you are in the universe, mother's second question would be, have you lived here all your life? However, if you answer to number one, where are you from originally, that you're from another state or another country, her number two question became, what brought you here? What brought you here? You were way over there, now you are here. Mother said people don't just get up and leave. What brought you here? So question one, where are you from originally? Two is either, have you lived here all your life or what brought you here? Question number three, to connect with people and bridge the gap to great relationships is do you have a family? Most people like talking about their family. Sure, you got a husband, wife, partner, significant other, children, dogs, cats, got a family. Question number four was, what do you do? What do you do? Now notice that was not question one. Most people ask that as a first question to determine whether one to get to know you as to whether they can get something from you, not mother. 
This was question four, not the determining factor as to whether she wanted to get to know you. It was just more information about you. Question five is wonderful. It takes us back to an innocent time. What did you want to be when you were growing up? What did you want to be when you were growing up? What a wonderful question. It takes us back to an innocent time. Now, question five, what did you want to be when you were growing up, can be thrown in anywhere in the sequence. The other four is sequential. One builds on another. Now, an example, I once wanted to meet with a very successful businessman in San Diego. Very busy. Took weeks to get the appointment. I kept calling. I finally get the appointment. I'm being walked down the hall to meet Mr. Johnson. Secretary said he's allocated 10 minutes to speak with you as he's got two people waiting in the foyer to see him and a committee down the hall that's expecting him in 20 minutes. I said, of course, I will be cognizant of his time. All I did when I walked in is said, Mr. Johnson, I certainly appreciate you seeing me. Before we get to my little issue that I wanted to discuss with you, I'm just curious. Where are you from originally? Notice the tone. 45 minutes later, he's still talking. 45 minutes later, he is still talking about himself. And I was fascinated by his story. His family came from Europe a long time ago, came to New York, didn't have anything, built, lost businesses, came across the country, built, lost, now they have what they have. Amazing story. He said, oh my gosh, I didn't realize we've been talking for 45 minutes, but I must say, get what he says next, you're such a great conversationalist. Hello, all I asked was five questions. He said, I kept those two people waiting and the committee down the hall, but I've so enjoyed my time with you. Why? Because what does the average person want from him? Money, power, influence. What did I want? His story. And he gave it to me. He stopped his whole day and gave it to me. And he said, by the way, what is it you wanted to talk with me about? I said, oh, it was just a little issue about so-and-so. He said, on your way out, just tell the secretary it's fine with me. He talked for 45 minutes, approved what I wanted in 10 seconds. Just an idea. So the affirmation for this particular episode of Boaz Power TV is this. Please write it down. I easily bridge the gap and create great relationships. I easily bridge the gap and create great relationships. If you like these messages and many people around the world find them to be highly beneficial, please forward this to five of your friends and suggest they go to my website, boazpower.com, and have them sign up for a free weekly broadcast of Boaz Power TV. You are special, you are unique, you are destined for greatness, and you are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.